So much media, so little time. Who keeps track of it all? That would be me. This is Bob Andelman, and this is the Mr. Media Interview, sponsored by 1-800-DIALDJs.com and recorded live from the world's new new media capital and hometown of actors Angela Bassett, Patrick Wilson, and Monica Raymond, St. Petersburg. When last we spoke, Thomas Calabro was preparing to host Acme Comedy's Acme Saturday Night live show and was being described as a former star of the late lamented TV series Melrose Place. Today, he's once again a star of Melrose Place, which has been revived by the CW and airs every Tuesday at 9 p.m. And he's also returning to host Acme Saturday Night, this Saturday, January 23rd. The online comedy TV show streams live Saturdays at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific at www.acmecomedy.com. You can catch him there then. Thomas, welcome back to Mr. Media. Thank you very much. Nice talking to you again. Yeah. We're in like Flynn, baby. Yeah. (laughs) You're you're having a pretty good run these days, it seems. Oh, yes. uh, Anybody who's working in a recession is in... uh, is in Happy City. That's where I where that's where I am now. <laughs> what uh, what was it like being back on a Melrose set for the first time after all these years? Um, I always you know I've been doing this for what thirty two years now. Uh, so <laughs> you know it's so different. Yet the name remains the same, but everything about it is different. We've got new creators, a new cast for the most part. We've got some returning cast members. So it was, a, it was sort of like a whole new deal, to tell you the truth. And even my first scene on the show that I shot, um, I was like a dad, which Michael Mancini had never been before in the first generation of Melrose Place. So that was new, too. So it pretty much felt like a first day on the set of a new show. <laughs> well, uh, since you mentioned that you know his life had changed, tell people who have not yet seen the show. Let's let's give them a reason to tune in. Catch them up on uh, Mancini. What what you know? What's he been doing all these years, and what's he doing now? Well, the recap, I guess, of the first seven years to tell you where he's coming from was that he was a man who would do anything, and I mean anything, without scruples to get what he wanted and get where he wanted to go. Um, and he went through seven wives in the process, nine marriages, uh, a number of different um, plots and schemes to to uh, get to be chief of staff at the hospital. Now, ten years later, we find out he's got a kid all grown up and a little one, 22-year-old and a five-year-old. A 22-year-old he's hardly seen in his adult life, um, doesn't have a real good relationship with, doesn't like very much but loves a lot. Uh, he's on his eighth wife, and uh, things aren't going great there either. <laughs> and we find out right away that he's having, he's in the middle of an affair with one of his previous wives. So uh, he's involved in many, you know, oh, and now oh, he's invented a heart device, which makes him like uber rich and uh, twice as dangerous. And uh, he's a lot more handsome. That's the other thing about him now. <laughs> it's more and, handsome and than the, uh, the first time around. And the writers wrote that into the script, huh? They said, okay, Mancini, we want him. Let's write him in here as being more handsome than he was before. <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, they got to take what's given to them and fly with it. <laughs> I, I, I'm I, the least, I'm a really, in all honesty, I'm probably the least handsome guy on the show. These guys are incredibly handsome. Go. <laughs> well, I was, yeah, I mean, I was going to say, I, I seem to recall, we're about the same age, uh, in, the, in the vicinity of 50, I think. That's correct. Uh, Right. And uh, I don't know. I I think uh, my my wife likes to tell me on nice days that uh, I uh, I look better just, you know, months away from 50 than I ever did at 25. So, uh, you know, I'll buy what you're selling. All right. (laughs) (laughs) We'll take and we'll take a compliment where we can get it, even if it's from ourselves. That's true. That's true. So, you're a fine-looking man, Thomas. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, sir, and so are you. I've never seen you, but I'm sure you are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the imagination is wonderful. So, did you, <laughs> did you ever imagine, uh, since your run on the show ended, that you get another shot at it, at the same show? You know, if you think about it, there's not that many shows that come back. And, 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 and within a 10-year time span, it's pretty tight, actually, for any show to come back. 
They've tried Remix, but it's usually been a lot longer than that. So no, none of us probably thought about it for a second. Um, however, after 90210 made its return on the CW and it became successful and they came back for a second season, then I thought, well, you know, the logical business step, if that works for the CW, is to try Melrose. And lo and behold, they did. Hmm. Then it became a matter of who the heck they were going to bring back. Because in 90210, you know, the second generation, they only brought back, you know, they brought back some characters in a limited way. Um, and so, you know, then I kind of figured, you know, they got to go to Heather first. So Heather's going to be their first choice. She was a sort of a, a sign, a, what do you call it, a cornerstone of the show. And then after that, the, you know, the character that most defined the show and what it represented, um, I, I appreciate very much, was Michael Mancini. So I thought they might come to me, and so they did. Now, uh, and it was a good thing. The show, uh, the show really did get a shakeup, though. When Heather Heather came back after it had started filming, was that pretty exciting? Are we talking about the first time around or the second? I'm sorry, the second time around. Yeah. Oh, here when she came back this time, yeah, because she's only been on a few. We're, most of her episodes will now air uh, from March 9th on. I think well, our first time back is March 9th. Um, yeah, there wasn't that. The, the, the shakeup had already begun, and, and the shakeup really entailed them just changing the tone of the show. The, the reason I wanted to sign on for the show this time around was because they weren't going to try to mimic what we did the first time around. Uh, yes, they were bringing back the beautiful people, the high-stakes drama, the fashion. That was all coming back. But stylistically, it was going to be much more grounded in its events. That's the murder mystery, which would make people act in, you know, crazy ways, even, but still given in the restrictions of oh, normality, you know what I mean? Unlike first time around where we just did things with reckless abandon and no care in the world. Um, and, um, and plus it was being shot in a totally different way. I mean, it was just beautiful. It was just darker. It was just a little bit more edgy in that way. Uh, now, what they've done in the meantime and what, what Heather signed on for was a show that was going to be a little lighter in tone, was going to have some comic elements like the first one did, a little lighter, a little more comedic, and uh, a little campier. So they are moving in that direction now. I uh, I, I talked to uh, Doug Savant a couple months ago. Oh, and uh, Yeah, he's a good guy. And uh, yeah, we were talking a little bit about the show. Uh, I, I, I guess uh, he's not going to be able to make it back. Well, I mean, he's otherwise occupied, so there you go. Yeah. Kind of done right yeah. there. <laughs> uh, but, um, you know, there. we have other returning cast members. You know, Josie Bissett's back as my right. ex-wife, Jane Mancini, and Daphne Zuniga's been back for a couple. Laura Layton, of course, and Heather. So, you know, that's a goodly amount. Any uh, any big surprises uh, in, in, in March when the show returns to the air? Oh, yeah, there are tons of surprises. That's, you know, <laughs> that's what makes our show run, right? We need the surprises. Well, yeah. So this, yeah, so you're going to see uh, quite a few things. You I wouldn't imagine you'd think would happen at the beginning of the season, including okay. the coupling of someone. There's some unlikely couples and such. Yeah. Coupling? You mean there's sex? Oh, good. Um. Just, uh, <laughs> only with nudity. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's let's let me not forget. Let's talk about Acme Saturday Night. This is your uh, second time around uh, tomorrow yeah. night, Saturday, yeah. uh, January twenty third. What are you doing differently, and is it any easier this time? Um, no, to the second question, it's not any <laughs> easier. It's still a breakneck speed. You wrap it together, glue and spit it, and go. Um, kind of production which makes it very very exciting you know and makes you stay on your toes that's the part i like about it does that feel any easier for my stomach no no <laughs> i've been an actor for like i said 32 years and it's you know you still get those little you can still get the tingles and the and the um you know all that nervousness before you go on a, on a, on stage um and what was the first cruise the same well it's different i mean we've got a different formatted show the show's shorter with more musical uh, interludes and a few less skits. So I don't have that many. I think I did six skits the first time around. This time I'm just doing four. Mm -hmm. So um, I've got those scenes in my iPod, and I just walk around with them in my head all day. 
Uh, will there be any Melrose uh, references this time around? Yes, there will. <laughs> there will be a number of Melrose references. We were okay. flew off. We flew at that this time. Last time we didn't so much at all, I don't think, but uh, this time we did. And well, and of course, of course, it's different. I mean, a, a year ago, I guess, whenever it was, uh, you weren't back on the show yet. So, uh, the, the, I mean, the show wasn't back necessarily. Um, yeah. And can you give us an, uh, some examples of the skits that you're doing for the show? Give us a sneak preview. Um, in one, I'm alive, a walking baby monitor. A walking baby <laughs> monitor from Brooklyn. In another, <laughs> I play Michael Mancini in a spoof of the show, whereas he's got an assistant who is um, a not very skilled assistant who is trying to help him manage his nefarious life. Um, what else have we got? Oh. <laughs> we have one that mimics my um, acting career for about uh, 10 years called Shunday, where no one wants to talk to me. <laughs> that was a joke on a joke. That was a joke on a joke of the skit. Um, and my last scene, I don't recall at this moment. <laughs> oh, okay. Fair enough. Now, before we have to let you go... Um, uh, what else is going on with you? Are you you had been doing uh, some movies, I think, uh, you know, uh, before going back to Melrose. Do you, do you have any other yeah, uh, projects? Yes. yes. Like I said, I was joking about Shunday because I did have um, – I have had a recurring um, role on Greek. I've been there a couple of seasons playing one of the kids' dads. Um, and I've done a ton of great independent movies the most notable of which was done this year earlier called L, a Cinderella tale. And it's like Cinderella, but the, so it's a modern day Cinderella tale about a, a girl who is great talent, who has not used it yet and who discovers it during the course of the movie. And it's a wonderfully done movie. We had some Disney people involved, a couple of young guys from Nashville that co-produced Sean and John Dunson. And they're very talented and they did a great job putting it together. And I'm very proud to be part of that project. Cool. cool. That'll be cool. Well, right. um, well uh, folks, listen, you can catch uh, actor Thomas Calabro uh, of the new, uh, well, on the new Melrose Place, uh, Tuesdays at 9, starting back in mid-March. What is it, March 15th, Thomas? It is indeed. I think March okay. 9th is our, our first episode back after the Olympics. Okay, March 9th. Uh, that's uh, 9 p.m. And you can look for him uh, tomorrow, Saturday, January 23rd, doing live online comedy sketches during Acme Saturday night. Uh, the show streams live uh, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific at www.acmecomedy.com. And Thomas, good to talk to you. Glad things are going well again. And thanks so much for joining us at Mr. Media today. Thanks. And all, all that information is also on my website, which is my name.com, www.thomascollabro.com. Oh, very good. And, well, we'll, and this we'll interview can be found there as well. Ah, uh, you're a good man, Thomas. <laughs> right, you got it, buddy. Good talk to you. Day. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks much. Uh, all right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And folks, for more interviews with your favorite TV stars, you can surf over to our main website, www.mrmedia.com. That's where you can listen to my first conversation with Thomas Calabro, uh, as well as the stars of Scrubs, Parks and Recreation, Friday Night Lights, Castle, and many more. Subscribe to Mr. Media on iTunes, and you'll never miss a show. Just search Mr. Media Interviews from within iTunes and subscribe for free. You can also listen with a piece of string and a tin can in many locations. If you've got an idea for a guest, email me directly at bob at andelman.com. You can also follow me on Facebook or on Twitter, www.twitter.com slash andelman or facebook.com slash andelman. Thanks so much for joining us today. Always appreciate when you give up a little piece of your day and spend it with us.